Okay, today I'm going to work on a chain stitch with some micro cord. Um, we'll start out right from the beginning. I'm going to make a basic cobra. Uh, I like to use the wrist size plus pi times the weave thickness. And so my wrist is seven and three quarter plus pi times point three three. Okay. I don't know if that's readable. Seven and three quarter plus pi times point three three. And that's going to come up to eight and three quarter eight a little over eight point seven eight so i'm going to round that off to a nine inch bracelet just because i'd rather go a little on the large size so what i know with the way i do my cobras is it takes me if i'm doing a two color it takes 4.5 color 4.5 inches per color per inch of bracelet but since this is going to be a one color we're going to go nine inches so nine times nine it gives me 81 inches of paracord and then I need to add the core so nine whoops not point two times two so I'm going to come up with 99 inches of paracord that I need. And for those of us that don't know, that's about eight and a quarter feet. So if you wanted to go a little extra, you could go figure out how much you use per weave, but I use four and a half on mine. Hey, um, I almost screwed up. I had that at 99 inches and I just realized I want to do a four core cord on this so we've got our 99 plus 9 times 2 it always seems to do that 117 inches which is going to give me about 9 and 3 quarter feet of cord okay so 117 so let's uh, get rid of that 99 so I don't get confused and we go 117 and so 60 and 60 is 120 if I remember my basic math correctly so it's almost yeah, we said nine and three quarter feet, huh? That's almost ten. Hi there. Okay, there's my sixty. my 57 so let's cut that um, we're going to take and seal off my spool so that I don't fray while I'm not while I'm away <laughs> okay I'm going to take both ends of my cut Melt this one good. Then we're going to heat this one up a little bit. I want to take my pliers and make them a little more buckle friendly. Okay, ooh, that's warm. Don't do that. Okay, so speaking of buckles, I've got my. Oh, don't do it that way either. My 
standard 5 8 inch contoured buckle here. And I want to come up from the back with my loop. I'm going to put my two ends into the loop here. And we're going to create a single cow's hitch on the back side of the buckle. Okay, and I did this before but I'd screwed up so we're going to start again. So starting from the start, I'm going to make sure that my jig is zeroed. So I've got my special Mini Cooper jig. Um, the way you do those, we set our buckle right at tight with it right at zero. Okay, and I'm going to roll this. i got to loosen that a little more, sorry. Roll that right to nine inches. And we'll tighten that sucker down. Okay, we're going to put the Nail end on, nail end on, and I'm going to flip it around just so it's the right side. Actually, no, just so that the cord is the way I, easier for me to work on this way. Okay, this end I'm going to do two cow's hitches. I'm going to come across the top uh, over both of the parts of the buckle here. I, I like the way this looks better to do cover bowl. And I'm going to come up through the center over the top of that cord and then come up from the back side and through that loop I just created. Pull my center core tight, hold that snug with my finger, and tighten my cow's hitch. Sometimes I pop it out of the jig a little bit to be able to manipulate the cord a little better. Push it all the way up to one side. You should have a pretty little cow's hitch there. Make sure we're tight. Okay, same the other side, over the front, down, up through the middle. Okay, this one I am going to pull off of there. I'll squish everything uh, over. So I've come up to the middle, I'm going to go over the top, squish all that over so I can bring my cord from the back. And I'm not going to even mess around this time, let's grab the pliers. side with the pliers. And then through the loop that we created there. Okay, now I'm going to put it back in the jig. Make sure we're the right length. So I'm just going to hold that tight with my finger while I work the cow's hitch till they're both tight. So I should have two cow's hitches. Okay, now 
I'm going to move back to my female end of the buckle and I'm going to take one I'm going to go up from the top down and this is just a tip I like to do when I do a Cobra Solomon I'll do one top down and one from the back bottom up a little issue these buckles don't want to play nice the ones on my jig and the ones on the bracelet it holds fine on the bracelet but it won't hold on my jig so I'm gonna to try to not let that bug me too much because I want to use these buckles so the one that came from the top down I'm gonna bring across the front the one from the back up is gonna go over the top around the back of the cords and up through that loop and that just gives me a nice look. I like the way it starts out the Solomon. It doesn't twist. And as you can see, it gives it a nice, clean look. So the one that's across the top is going to stay across the top. The one on the back is going to stay in the back. And we're just going to make a regular old basic Solomon here, Cobra. Okay, we're going to tuck these in, so what I need to do is I need to kind of melt them so that they're not flat anymore, so I can get them in a needle. Okay, sounds like I'm out of gas. Good thing I've got a spare. Okay, so ah, we get that hot. We just kind of mold it so we can get a needle on it. Okay, and one thing I forgot when I do the four core cord, four core bracelet, it takes a little bit more than when I weave. And I typically cut a little bit extra length anticipating that and I forgot. So we're gonna get creative tucking this, but what basically I wanna do is I'm gonna run my needle down the back side of the bracelet here. Uh, three or four weaves is all, uh, especially this time since I have no, no cord to tuck. Run it back through there. And then what I need to do now is get my loose end into my bracelet or into my excuse me and I pulled it out let's do this other side first anyway is that little one's gonna have a chance of popping out so 
And so we'll do the long one first. Kind of shape that to where it's close to being able to get a needle. And then we gotta melt it again. I try not to come in contact with the ow melted cord as much as I can avoid. That's why I shape it with the pliers first to get the needle in there. And these needles work good for that. Uh, they were binding posts quarter 20, not quarter 20. Are they quarter 20? That's not quarter 20. I'm not sure. They're binding posts though from the hardware store. And then I cut, put them in a drill with a pair of, with some files and shaped it. Okay. So this one I want to go a little bit further than I did last time just because I don't want to cut the end. I just want to bury everything underneath the weave here as far as I can. So that should be plenty. doing is I'm using this hard surface of my scissors to push against for my uh, for my uh, needle to push against because it digs into your skin if you don't okay I need to go just a little further and then I'm gonna put my cord into the needle and screw it on a little bit and then we'll work it through until it's in the back side of the bracelet and then we turn the needle the other way to release. And so it's tucked right in there, invisible to the naked eye. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna go not near as far. It's just a little nubbin. But we're gonna put it right there. Again, I'm gonna use scissors to push against. Let's get that. And in case you're wondering why I don't use my fingers, I don't know if you can get that in the light just right, but you can see it wouldn't feel good. Here's where I've done it using my pliers couple times. I don't want to do that to my hand, so okay. Let's uh see what we can do to get this on into there now. There's not a whole lot. I might be struggling in vain. Get that in there. Okay, and then I'm going to try and get the needle threaded on. Nope. What I need. Is some smaller kind of pliers. Uh -huh. 
I want to search in vain for your love. Okay. And I'm going to get that. I'll screw it on now that it's in there. See, I can tug on the hemostats. It's on there as much as it's going to be on there. There we go. And it's hidden on the back side. Nobody will be none the wiser that I didn't quite have enough, but this is just for me anyway. I'm making it, this is going to be my new work bracelet. Um, okay, I'm going to do some stitching. We'll be right back and show you the chain stitch. Okay, so I was telling you earlier, I knew how much cord it took me to make my Cobra. How I've done that in the past is I make a portion of bracelet and I figure out how much cord it took me to make and then I figure out by the length of the bracelet how much cord I need. So we're going to do the same thing with the stitching. So I've got about an inch and a half stitched. So I've written that down there. Um, I've also got about an inch and a half extra at the end. So we'll subtract that from my cord, but we'll add that in later because I like to have a little extra, especially this chain stitch, and you'll see why. Chain stitch is really nice to unpick. You just grab the loop, pop it, and it pops right out. I'm going to pull the cord through. So there's my piece of scrap cord that I practiced with here. And we've got eight, about eight and a half inches. So if we take our eight and a half. We had an inch and a half left over. Leaves us with seven inches of cord per inch and a half. So I forgot to turn the sound off on this. No, I don't know if this calculator shows up with the light glare or not, but so what we, we have a nine inch bracelet. So an inch and a half take six of those inch and a halves for a nine inch bracelet. So I'm going to take six times seven inches of cord. So 42 and I'm going to add in an inch and a half at the end to have a little extra because of the way this works. So I'm going to go with 44 inches. So that would be about three and two thirds cord, foot feet a cord of micro cord. So I'm going to go get my micro cord and I'll be right back. Okay, I've cut my 44 inches of white paracord, or excuse me, micro cord. I've already laced it onto my stitching needle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up two or three cords on the back side just to lock the cord in place. And I'm going to split the uh, center right here to come out the front right through the middle. OK, 
Okay, and this chain stitch is a very easy stitch to do. So I'm going to keep this on the top. Um, I'm going to come right here next to where the cord comes out of the center. And I'm going to make sure that that goes over my cord like that. And then I'm just going to pull it tight. And there's my first link of the chain. And then it's just simply following that again. So I'm going to come keep that on top, and go through my chain loop under the next cord, and make sure it goes over micro cord. kind of keep everything even just work it as you go we'll keep those even like that okay so same thing keep that up on the top go through the loop under the next oh that was unusual And just kind of keep them all to where they look the same as you go along. They don't need to be overly tight. And we can come back later with the needle and adjust as necessary. taking that outside of the frame. Sorry about that. Okay, so we go through the loop under the next cord on top of that. And then like I say, all I'm going to do later is I'm going to come back and kind of even out tension because I want them to all kind of be the same. Pretty simple stitch. It's an embroidery stitch. Um, I'm just applying it to a paracord bracelet. I've seen it done on a fishtail as well. I just chose to do a cobra because in this case I'm going to do three colors. I'm going to have red, white, and blue stripes on here. Um, I've kind of got a specific reason I'm doing that. I don't want to get into too much detail in the video, but uh, it's in remembrance of a friend. Kind of a 
awareness ribbon type thing. But I'm just going to keep doing this all the way down. See, the nice thing about this stitch is even if it kind of gets funky looking you can always come back after the fact and even things out so we'll do that kind of even it out make it So I was having a little bit of camera issues yesterday, so I never got to show you the end of the chain stitch. And as you can see, I've added two other colors, but the way it ends, this is gonna be the same regardless. So I've just got a couple more stitches. I'm just gonna show you again. So I go through the loop then I go under Cord. Make a loop around that. Pull that through and cinch your snug. And we'll do that two more times, it looks like, through the loop, onto the cord. one through the loop under the cord and pull it tight okay so now that we're at the end of the bracelet I just need to take this to the back and on this end I'm going to stick it between the two cores and my cow's hitch there to get it to the back of the bracelet. Pull it tight and then I'm just going to run it under several of the strands of the bracelet. Snip it off. And like I said, it was a little bit of a change there. I started with the white. I was hoping to show the white all the way, but I was having some camera issues. But it's a pretty simple stitch. Um, as you can see, I've done three different colors on here. That's all there is to it for the chain stitch. Hopefully uh, this helps out. If not, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. I get back with you. Thanks.